I learned something new about type 1 diabetes that would have dramatically improved my quality of life and control over blood sugars had I not ignored it for five plus years. Now, in today's episode, I actually want to break down the most common missed gap with type 1 diabetes. What most of my clients share was never shared with them by their medical teams and how you can use that as a shortcut to control your blood sugars, but also to avoid this hidden gap that so many people struggle with, myself included, the five years thing, that was me, and uh, how you can fix your mindset as it relates to diabetes as well. So today's episode is packed, and I hope you're ready for it. If you don't know who I am, my name is Matt Vandevecht. I'm a certified master fitness trainer and nutritionist living with type 1 diabetes, and I like to share the good and the bad from my own life experiences and research with you in hopes that I can give you some shortcuts to living your best life with type 1 diabetes. So uh, I got an interesting slash kind of sad, but mostly interesting story for you today. Gonna get into our theme song and then hop straight into it. I've spent the last 10 years pushing the limits while identifying trends and patterns in my type 1 diabetes management. Follow along as I learn, apply, and share the fitness, nutrition, and lifestyle strategies that I've learned from diabetes experts around the world. The real question is, how can we live fearlessly with diabetes while maintaining stable blood sugars? This podcast is here to give you the answer. My name is Matt Vandevecht, head coach and co-founder of FTF Warrior, and welcome to Part of My Pancreas. I canceled my triathlon. If you've been following for a while, you know that I signed up for my first triathlon about two-ish years ago. I think we're getting around that timeline. And uh, I did not think I would take it this far to where I am now signed up for a full distance Ironman. If you don't know what an Ironman is, because I didn't, it is a 2.4 mile swim straight into a 112 mile bike ride, straight into a marathon, which is 26.2 miles, all in the same day. Uh, it's for psychopaths like me that think life's not hard enough already. Let's just add some more challenges. But I have been signing up for triathlons throughout this year because I actually enjoy the sport now. But triathlons that are less, uh, so Olympic distance triathlons, uh, half Ironmans, right? So the lesser to give me more practice, but also to make it so it's still fun for me, right? And I had signed up for this Olympic distance triathlon in hopes of completing what's called the Triple Crown Series. Now, if you look behind me, you can probably see on the wall, there's a black metal frame. It's got three medals in it. Uh, and there's a couple medals hanging off of it as well. And hey, I've actually got another medal right here. Ooh, <laughs> they're everywhere. I actually need to organize them and like actually display them appropriately. But my first year in triathlon, I did what's called the Triple Crown Series, which is three qualifying triathlons in the same year. And they give you this fancy little plaque to put your, your medals in. And when I was first training for this Ironman, my coach told me, hey, let's just focus on the Ironman. And I was like, but there's this cool triple crown series thing that like, you know, makes you feel better about yourself. <laughs> like if you do all three, you get a cool little metal plaque. And he's like, sounds like this is important to you. I guess we can do it. A couple months go by and I was like, hey coach, um, I just care about the Ironman. I recognize it is an incredibly difficult thing to do and I don't want to mess up the training plan. If you think that my time, my effort, my energy would be better suited doing something else other than completing the third and final Triple Crown Series qualifier event, I'll cancel it. And he said, honestly? I said, honestly. And he was like, okay, cancel it. <laughs> I was like, dang it, I was kind of hoping you wouldn't say that. But ultimately, my coach was like, look, your race is in three weeks, and it's two weeks after the final qualifying event. That's too close. You should not be doing a triathlon two weeks before your Ironman uh, because we got to do the, the proper taper, which is when you slow down your training to let your body recover from the heavy training volume. It's like we got to get a final brick ride in. We can't do that if you have a race. So he's like, instead of doing, you know, what is it, a 35 mile race, I want you to do a 95 mile bike ride and a 20 mile run on that same day instead in place of it, right? And part of me was thinking, man, I've already done two triathlons that are qualifying events this year. This is the third one. And on top of that, and this is the real reason why I wanted to do it, this is the 50th year anniversary 
of triathlon. And triathlon was actually invented in San Diego. How cool is that? I didn't know this, uh, but the place that I have been parking my car for my workouts is literally 10 feet away from a memorial plaque that shows the birthplace of the sport of triathlon. <laughs> it's like, what? That's insane. So I have to go back there and like actually go find that plaque. But long story short, I was like, it's the 50th year anniversary. It's the third of three qualifying events. I've already done two. I don't want to cancel it. And I've paid like, I don't even know, 280, 300 bucks for this event. <laughs> like. You, it's not refundable, man. And uh, ultimately, it was like, you know what? If the goal is Iron Man, I need to do everything in my power to prioritize that. I'll cancel it. And uh, he looked at me and was like, okay, let's do it. I'll, I'll get your training schedule reorganized. We'll get it set up for optimizing for the Iron Man event, and uh, we'll get you all set. And it, it made me think about this a little bit because I realized I was suffering from something called sunk cost bias or the sunk cost fallacy. If you've never heard about this, basically I've already sunk cost into this event. I've paid for it. I've already done the first two events. It's a, it's a cool thing that I don't want to miss out on, right? And I, I feel that there's a bias in my decision-making ability because I don't want to cancel it since I've already sunk cost into it. I've already made progress in that area. So I actually wanted to look up this definition for you guys because this is such a deep thing within diabetes as well. With the strategies that we choose, the um, educators that we seek, the medical teams that we're supposed to go to with our questions, this sunk cost of we've already spent so many years with this doctor, how could I choose a new doctor? It's like, well, what are we prioritizing for though? And are we making decisions purely off of the sunk cost that we've experienced so far? And would it actually benefit us more to go down a new path, right? And before I get to the definition, I'm going to give you a different definition. I believe it is insanity. People love to quote this definition, so I will too. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting a different outcome, right? And so with sunk cost bias, by the way, I'm going to say it slower so you know what the words are. Sunk, like sinking a ship, cost, like finances, bias or decision-making fallacy, right? Sunk cost bias means you've already sunk cost or time or energy or whatever it is into this thing, relationship, right? That you don't want to try something new. You think I can make it work. And a lot of times that's not the case. So the definition of insanity, continuing to do something that's not really working for you, expecting a different outcome. See, nothing changes when nothing changes. And sometimes you have to deal with the sunk cost and let it go. So. The definition I got here for you. Sunk cost bias, also known as the sunk cost fallacy, is a cognitive bias where individuals continue to invest time, money, or resources into a decision, project, or course of action, even when it is too, no longer irrational to do so. This is driven by the desire to not waste the resources already invested, aka the sunk costs, even though those costs are unrecoverable and shouldn't influence future decisions. For example, if someone has spent a lot of money on a car that keeps breaking down, they might continue paying for expensive repairs rather than buying a new car, a new reliable car, because they feed, wait, what? Because they feel they're already invested so much into the old one. These biases can prevent people from making rational decisions based on current and future outcomes because they're overly influenced by past irretrievable expenditures. I thought this was a fantastic example of what so many people go through, what I'm going through with this triathlon, uh, but what so many people go through with their diabetes management. You've picked the diabetes diet that you're going to stick to. You've been doing it for years and it's just not working as well as you'd like it to. It worked a little bit initially, but now you want, uh, let's say, perfection, right? Or as close as you can get to it and it's just not delivering those results. Maybe it's your medical team. You've been working with them for years or maybe you paid for uh, a full course with a dietitian right? And all that you want is for it to work, but it's just not working. But you paid for it, so you might as well keep going to it and trying to use it, trying to make it work, right? It's like buying that car that keeps breaking down, the expensive car that you're like, I put X amount of money into it. I'm just going to do one more mechanics trip. It didn't work. 
I'm gonna go to a different mechanic. We're gonna make this work, <laughs> right? And we just continue to sink more and more time, finances, resources into what are eventually gonna be recognized as failed projects or failed ideas. And the good news is that you can change your mind at any given point. In fact, you can make, I heard this amazing phrase, you at any point in your life, you can make a single decision that will dramatically influence your outcomes. I mean, at any given point, we can make a single decision that will change the trajectory of our lives. Like, I mean, I could go do, um, what's it called? Black tar heroin? I don't even know what the drugs are called. Never done drugs. But I could start, right? Technically, that's a decision that I could make today. Dramatically different outcomes. I could also decide I'm going to go move to wherever Mount Everest is and I'm going to go hike Mount Everest. And not going to lie, that actually did cross my mind as I was saying, I was like, I bet I could probably do that. <laughs> that would dramatically change the outcome of my life, right? Uh, or end it. Who knows? I guess both of those could end my life. But the point is, you hold the power to make a decision at any point in your life to change course. It's an amazing thing to realize this. At any point in life, we could change course. I could shave my head today. I can just do that, right? Uh, I could decide today I'm going to be an Olympian in four years and devote my life to that. I actually did decide six months ago that I was going to be an Ironman. And in less than three weeks, I will be an Ironman, God willing, <laughs> as long as I cross the finish line. But you see how these, these powerful decisions shape our lives. And when we make decisions based in fear or in the sunk cost bias, we are holding ourselves back from truly achieving that greatness. And it's so unfortunate because a lot of times with diabetes, we feel locked in to these biases, right? Locked into the decisions that maybe our medical team made for us. And they said, hey, this is your insulin to carb ratio. And we feel disempowered to influence that. This is your basal rate. This is the diet that you are going to follow, right? And it's like, why do I not feel that I'm able to question these things. And you should, by the way. Totally reasonable for you to question, not necessarily to reject outright, but to question all instructions that are given to you in search of a better understanding of those things, right? Not just to like stick it to the man and, <laughs> and stop listening to your doctor. No, no, like they've got some good tips, right? But question everything for your own sake and for your better outcomes. So this sunk cost bias, and I've unfortunately had a few conversations over the years where people do have this sunk cost bias or the sunk cost fallacy impacting their decisions. And it comes out in those, those consultation calls that I have with them, where you know we'll go through a 45 minute phone call, figure out everything that's wrong, figure out the exact solution, lay out a blueprint, here's the plan, step one, step two, step three, all right, you ready to jump in? You ready to start getting this actually fixed? And I'm like, oh, well, at the hospital that I go to, they have this uh, diabetes educational course and I'm only halfway through it. I should probably finish the course before I do your thing. And I'm like, has the course taught you anything new? Because that's fine. And they're like, well, no, it, everything's been reviewed so far, but maybe the next one's going to be better. And I'm like, this sounds like... Um, like an abusive relationship, <laughs> you know, they'll get better, I promise. <laughs> and it's like, but there's been no proof that they're gonna get better. Or, you know, I, I hired this other diabetes coach and I, I feel like I should go through that program first. And I'm like, again, have you learned anything new? Or my favorite, my, my dietitian or my endocrinologist has some new ideas that they wanna run by me. And I'm like, the same one that told you that you're doing good enough and should stop trying so hard, it doesn't sound like they support you in growth, in actually thriving with diabetes. It kind of sounds like you're being pushed off to the side, but you want to go back to them. Why? And they're like, well, I've been seeing them for five years and I just feel like I owe it to them. Like, no, stop. You don't owe anybody anything. You get to make your decision to move forward or not. And unfortunately, it does hold a lot of us back in many different areas of our life. So for me, with this triathlon, I had to make a decision where even though I've got sunk cost, right, literally finances, this was an expensive race, um, resources, I did put training towards this shorter distance race, and uh, time, energy. Like I wanted to 
do this third race. So I've already done the first two races that now count for nothing. If I don't complete the third race, it's as if they didn't exist, right? And that's hard to get over, but realizing it was sunk cost and that ultimately it did not serve the end result. I made a decision to accept the sunk cost and move on because there are bigger and better things outside of that decision. And that's the key I want you to take home today is that you probably have sunk cost in things with diabetes that you feel like you have to see through because you've already put energy towards it. You've already done all the research for this new diet. You've already uh, been working with this medical team for X number of years, or you've already paid for this diabetes educational course, even though it's not working, you wanna see it through. At any given point, you can make the most powerful decision for you, which is to move towards the thing you know is going to work versus hoping the thing you've been doing is going to work. Right. And I think that's the big distinction here is that we get to make that choice to accept the sunk cost. It's already gone either way. Right. And that's what helped me to realize I'm like, I already spent the money. It's already gone. Right. Uh, for the, the triathlon. But I, I have plans for a bigger and better future. I want to become an Ironman. So it serves me better to accept the sunk cost, set it aside and go, ah, that hurt, but I've got bigger plans and then move forward towards the Ironman. With diabetes, I don't care what diet you're focused on, what exercise, what medical team, what educator, I don't care what any of them said. I don't care what the plan is. If it's not working, or if it's not meeting your desired outcomes, accept the sunk cost and move on to bigger and better things. There is a plan for you. There is a path for your specific desires, whatever that might be, by the way, right? If you want to be an Olympic athlete, that's not on my bingo card, I'm okay with that. But maybe you do. Maybe you want to be um, a culinary masterpiece or master, <laughs> whatever. Maybe you like food, right? And you want flexibility to enjoy different types of foods. Great. Maybe you have weight loss goals and you're more focused on that. There's a plan for you, but you got to recognize when things aren't working or they're just not working as well as you'd like them to, when to drop it and change course. It's a difficult thing. It feels risky, but I promise you there's better things for you when you make committed decisions to following new paths. Uh, so obviously do your research before you just jump into a new thing. I've been researching uh, and obsessing over Ironman for like almost a full year now. So I knew Ironman is the way to go for me. It made sense to accept the sunk cost before. But uh, I promised if you, you stuck around to the end, I'd give you the most common missed opportunity with medical teams. So many people hear this as well. It's the pre-bolus. So many clients that I take on tell me that they don't understand how the pre-bolus works. They've been either not told about it at all, or they've been told about it, but told it's a static pre-bolus. So it's 10 to 15 minutes. And they're like, well, how come I still spike 200 points? It's because it has to be dynamic. But this is a tricky part. Again, sunk cost fallacy is that I've been told by my doctor to do something. Shouldn't I continue following his orders? Well, the reality is if it's not serving you well, AKA, if you're still spiking or dropping, right? If whatever it is, isn't working, it's time to accept the sunk cost and consider moving forward in a different direction. I recently fired my doctor because he wasn't getting me what I needed. He was a great guy. And in the other areas of life, he had helped me. So he had given me progress. But at the point that I was at, it just wasn't meeting my needs. So instead of saying, oh, he's just a doctor I've always gone to, I said, hey, look, man, I'm gonna go find somebody else who's a little bit more advanced because that's where I'm at now. And that's okay, right? So recognizing when it is time for you to make that decision, that you're gonna have to accept the sunk cost, it's gonna sting a little bit, whether it's time, resources, finances, whatever it is. But as long as you have a new path that you're confident in, then that decision can be made in an empowered state where you feel confident in it, right? And that's of course what we aim to do with our clients that we take on. And by the way, we don't take on all clients. There's some people who just aren't the right fit. And so we point them towards other resources because I don't want to be 
the sunk cost, <laughs> right? I want to be the new opportunity where we enable you to live your best life. And if that's not something we can offer, my whole team is trained to give you resources that will help you and to recommend other experts that we're connected with in our network. So either way, whenever you hop on a call with myself or with one of our team members, you get next steps that will actually serve you well. It's not just funneled into one specific decision, it's multiple avenues for everyone that exists and it has to be custom tailored to you, especially when it comes to diabetes management. I'll give you an example of the pre-bolus again. Your pre-bolus can be anywhere from negative, which means you take the bolus after you eat your food, to an hour long. I've even seen in some cases where you take your insulin and you wait an hour. You're like, this is ridiculous. Mine used to be 45 minutes. I've manipulated my pre-bolus through a number of different strategies that we teach in our programs to be about 20 minutes now. So it's a lot more manageable, but that changes dramatically based on your activity level that day, your insulin sensitivity or insulin resistance, your existing insulin on board, current blood sugar, how did you sleep last night? A lot of factors go into that. And that's exactly where blood sugar formulas come into play. Right, so that's what we teach, that's what makes us different. And that's where, if you don't have a blood sugar formula in place yet, you've been working towards something else, that something else is the sunk cost fallacy. So you might need to consider dropping it and refocusing on blood sugar formulas. It's gonna feel a little bit like a bummer because you put all this effort and attention to this other diabetes management style. But if this other diabetes management style can only get you to 70% of your best self, and blood sugar formulas can get you to 100% of your best self, sticking with the thing that you've sunk cost into already means you're maxed out at 70% of awesome, right? Where if you dropped it, let it sting a little bit, ugh, sunk cost, but then learned the new way of blood sugar formulas, it might actually enable you to live your best life, right? So a little sting up front, sunk cost, ugh, okay, I canceled my triathlon, but, I'm focused on bigger, better things. So if that's something you want help with, blood sugar formulas, we actually created uh, a little training for you to go check it out, learn more about blood sugar formulas, see if that's something that's in line with what you're looking for that would help you with your diabetes management. Because again, what I want is what's best for you. That's it. So I'm gonna help you get there any way I can. But you can actually go to diabetesinaction.com to check out that free training on blood sugar formulas and uh, get some more info on it. But recognize anything in life, if you're trying something new, trying to get to a new level, get better and achieve that best self version of you, it's a good chance it's gonna require some sunk cost and it will sting. But looking back, it's gonna totally be worth it. So I hope that helps. And uh, if anybody wants my ticket for the triathlon, comment below, I guess, because I already paid for it. <laughs> If there's any, any triathletes in San Diego that want to give it a shot, uh, I've already got a fully paid ticket for you. So, uh, no, I hope you enjoyed this one. But if you're interested in blood sugar formulas, go to diabetesinaction.com. It's what enabled me to keep my blood sugars in range over 90% for over five years while training for Ironmans, raising a family, running a business, and actually enjoying food again. So, diabetesinaction.com. We'll see you guys in the next episode. See you in that training, actually, if you head over there right now. Have a great rest of your day. Keep up the fight.